Keep Shooting podcast episode 21. Uh, we're a little late, man, but it's all it's all good. I've been busy. Um, went to went to Massachusetts for two days. Worked with my guys Mike and AJ. Also, two two members of the Keep Shooting subscription. But that's like it's like my fourth time working with those guys, man. And we had we had an awesome two days. Uh, you know, the, it was the Friday and Saturday right right before Memorial Day. And the coolest thing about working with people over an extended period of time is that. You can just dig into things deeper and deeper. And with that base knowledge that's already there, you would almost think that the longer you work with somebody, like the more complex things you can add. But in all reality, because the understanding starts to the understanding starts to 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 kind of kind of be at the forefront in terms of everything that's happening, things slow down even more so. And the attention to the detail and the nuance is, it's a lot of fun. As a teacher, it's its the most fun. And I, I was working with another another guy on Sunday that I've been working with a while. And I told him after, I was like, that was the most fun lesson I've ever had with you. Because we literally, from start to finish, focused on just what to do with the screen and the footwork involved in, in coming off a one dribble, two dribble pull up off of a screen. And it's it's so interesting because, like, I, I think a lot of times we're always we're always searching for the thing that that looks the most complicated, because the things that look complicated oftentimes are the things that are associated with attention, right? And I was I I think back like on my journey in terms of how I how I kind of got into teaching, and then as I the more I did it, the the I would say the less flashy it became, but early on, I, I would say that I'm I'm 100% guilty of of being very attention oriented. And I went on I went on a little bit of a rant on Instagram uh, on Monday night. I think it was Monday night, but I was just typing out stuff because I was I was having these these different thoughts because I was coming. I, I came across some video, and this is I, maybe I've even done this video, so we'll say I did it. I didn't do it, but we'll say I did it. And the video was titled how to increase your range and it was it was simply somebody starting close to the basket and then making a shot taking a step back making a shot taking a step back making a shot take a step back and the and that was the instruction of the video and the, that was it was like this is how you increase your range and it's not right like there's there's no there's no real teaching going on in terms of oh this is how we produce power. And the further out we get, this has to move faster and release on the way up, blah, blah, blah. And it really, it really got me thinking because I saw that video and I'm like, man, this is, this is a very misleading thing because if a kid were to see this and if this person had, if this person has a, a rather large uh, following or, or group of people that watch him, kids are going to see that and they're going to think that's how they increase the range. Oh, I just keep taking a step back. Right. But that's not that's not going to do anything for you in terms of getting you to understand what's what really has to happen. And so that's where I came to this this whole thing. And I was like, there's a lot there's a huge difference between information and attention. And. There's a there's a lot of attention out there. You'll hear people say, man, there's just so much information out there. I don't know what to what to what to uh what to watch or what to believe. And I disagree. I don't think there's a lot of information out there. I think there's not a lot of information out there. I think there's a lot of attention and it makes sense, right? Like it, it kind of, attention is kind of what feeds the beast, especially in the social media age. And the more attention you get, the more eyes on you, the more opportunities you'll have to grow whatever it is you're trying to grow, whether that be a brand, a business, et cetera. So it, I get it, right? You need, you kind of, you kind of need both, but I think, it's, it, it rests on us as the teachers and then also as even as the people taking in the information to to kind of do your due, dil- due diligence in due, 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 <laughs> in uh in being able to to recognize the difference between wait is this being done as a benefit to somebody else or is this being be- done just for the benefit of the person uh on uh, that that's actually giving the instructions because they're trying to uplift their their platform or their name or their brand and it's a it's like i said man it's 
sometimes it could be one and the same for sure, right? But I, I think I said the last time, it's one of those things where the more we start to under actually two podcasts ago, the more we start to understand that it's through helping other people that your brand will be elevated. I think we're going to we're going to end up getting to to a much better place. But I, I was going through that little rant and I, I posted the the definition of information uh, from the dictionary, which was knowledge obtained from investigation, study, or instruction. That's the definition of information. Now, I would say that more often than not, from a basketball perspective, there's a lot of things that have none of those things associated with them. So somebody will go in the gym, think about, hey, this is a good drill for, but it's really just something that they made up on the spot that they're trying for the very first time and that they'll probably, most likely, inevitably, never actually use with a player. And that's attention. Right. That's not information. You didn't do your time. You didn't you didn't spend your time studying or teaching uh, what it is that you're what, that you're relaying to everybody else. And I, I mean, like I said, I got to be honest, like early on in my in my uh, in my journey with this stuff, I was very I was very attention oriented because I thought I had the information. But the truth of the matter was I was so green in terms of what I actually knew uh, that in my eyes, I was like, oh yeah, I, I know how to shoot. So I know how to teach it. And now I'm just going to start doing things that A, look cool. B, I grew up with, and I'm going to just start putting it out there. But really, I hadn't done my research yet. I hadn't, I hadn't really earned the right to even probably give information at that point in time. And I do, I do remember that while going through it sometimes, I was always thinking to myself, there has to be more. There has to be more, right? There, it was like, it, was like um, it would almost like feel like, I talk about mastery a lot with George Leonard and how we have to kind of mine the plateau a little bit. I felt like I was on a plateau for the longest time as it pertained to what I was teaching. And I didn't know how to get above it, but I knew that I just had to keep showing up every day. Um, but then eventually you'd stumble upon something or something would click and it would it would it would it would feel amazing and that's i mean that's why i continue to to even do what i do now because i'm always constantly after that that uh that feeling it's like that uh carl sagan quote understanding is a form of ecstasy and then jason silva piggybacked off of it it was like understanding is a form of extra ecstasy but it's really understanding for the first time that really gets us going like we remember that first time things clicked or the first time we really understood something on a deeper level and it's a pretty damn good feeling But I don't know exactly when the when the when the switch flipped, but everything became about more for me. I just wanted I just wanted to learn more. I need to learn more because the more I know, the better off I'm going to be able to explain it. And and that that's that's what I'm after, right? That's what I'm after. Real information versus attention. And nothing will humble you more as a teacher than the first time you ever get in front of a kid and you're tasked with making them a better player. And you honestly have no idea how to answer their questions or what scenario to put them in. You don't even know how to analyze what they're doing yet. And I remember the very first person I ever worked with and, and I'm going through it and I was working with this kid and I, and I, I thought that, like, I, I remember thinking to myself, I I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here, right? I don't, I don't have what it takes to do this yet. But the more we would work together, the better I would get at it. And I'm very, I'm very open about the amount of of reading that I do. And at the at the time where I'm, I'm trying to 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 build this understanding of what it takes to teach shooting, I'm also reading everything that comes my way. I'm looking for I'm 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 literally looking for anything, whether that be personal development, whether that be success oriented, whether it be business, biographies. I'm just reading everything. And I came across Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers. I think Malcolm Gladwell's an awesome author for people to read, especially if you're just starting to get into something. Um maybe you're just really starting to go down that path of wanting to be really, really good at really good at a, a particular uh a particular thing. And 
I think his books, you know, you know, 10,000 hours, all that, all that kind of stuff. But this particular book was as outliers in was 10,000 hours in outliers or was, or was outliers 10,000 hours. It was in outliers. 10,000 hours was in outliers. Gotcha. All right. So outliers, right? So I'm going to pull this up on my phone because the first time I read this, and this was a long time ago, but the first time I read it, I remember reading it and a light bulb went off in my head and I was thinking that that's the answer. Like that's the answer to what I'm looking for in terms of getting good at teaching. Because with each time I taught, I felt like I was getting more confident in what I was in the information I was relaying. Uh, but the problem was how many people am I going to teach? How many people can I reach? Right. I'm, I'm on Craigslist at the time. That's how I'm getting clients. So it was kind of a, it was kind of this thing of I, I'm going to take every single client that comes my way because that's an opportunity for me to teach. And selfishly, that's going to be what helps propel me further and further and further down the line. But here's the story that's within outliers that I think is that, it, that that's a beautiful story and we can kind of break it down. So here's a little excerpt from it. The Beatles ended up traveling to Hamburg five times between 1960 and the end of 1962. On the first trip, they played 106 nights of five of. 106 nights of five or more hours a night. Their second trip, they played 92 times. Their third trip, they played 48 times for a total of 172 hours on stage. The last two Hamburg stints in November and December 1962 involved another 90 hours of performing. All told, they performed for 270 nights in just over a year and a half. By the time they had their first burst of success in 1964, they had performed live an estimated 1,200 times. Which is, ex- which is extraordinary. Most bands today don't perform 1,200 times in their entire careers. The Hamburg Crucible is what set the Beatles apart. And I think that is incredible for a variety of reasons. Their last stint was in December of 1962, and 64 is where they really burst on the scene. So there at that point in time, they, they did... All of those, all of 270 nights, um, and then there was still another year before they even broke through in terms of the the the, the fame and, and and everything like that. So to me, that's incredible in itself that you perform 270 times in a year, uh, and then you still they, who knows where else how much they performed within that next year before they they finally had the breakthrough. Amazing. What's really amazing to me about this is we can look at a case study like the Beatles and. You could look at that and be like, oh, man, so nice to have the fame and and the adulation and all that kind of stuff. Not understanding that they put themselves through the ringer in terms of being able to get to that point. So it's that whole idea of, of preparation. And I, I talk about preparation a lot with with every player that I work with because I believe that it's paramount in making shots. That whole idea of we make shots before we shoot them. The Beatles made their success before their success happened, right? And it's not a matter of they were the most absolute, most talented guys in the world. They were talented, right? But it's not like it's not like there aren't more talented people out there. It was that combination of of having the talent and then having the having the foresight or maybe not, maybe they're just doing it because they're like, shoot, we got to get paid. Who knows? It's just, just like a lucky type thing. But you playing 270 times within a year is crazy to me. That's, 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 that's just extreme dedication. And if you already love what you do and then you put that much repetition behind it, I mean, your results that you're going to see from it are, are absolutely inevitable. And that preparation led to their eventual breakthrough. That preparation led to them becoming what they became. I don't know. I mean, let's hope let's hope it did because it makes the story sound that much better. But, I mean, it'd be interesting to hear their take on it as to whether or not they believe that kind of solidified um, their ability to perform and everything like that. But I think it, for analogy purposes, I think it's a great it's a great thing. So if we look at if we even look at shooting the basketball, right? how we prepare becomes everything in my eyes. I do. I, I, I focus a lot on, on how we move balance wise. I focus on our, how our hands are prepared. I focus on the, the very first millisecond that that ball starts moving up the body. To me, all of those things contribute 
to your eventual success. And in the case of shooting the basketball, that success is, is just making shots. And if you think back, like I used to be, I used to be so scared to uh, speak publicly. I was, I was so afraid to stand up in front of people and, and, and talk. And I, I found out that the majority of the time I was scared to do it because I was more so often, more so often, I was more often than not, um, not prepared. I would go up kind of half-assing some type of project or something that I did, and I'm just trying to talk my way through it rather than actually of doing the work beforehand and preparing myself in a way that I could get up and actually talk about it at a level that makes sense. And I found that when I prepared myself, this is another way to use like an analogy. I heard I was listening to a um, an astrophysicist speak the other day because I'm, the, I'm because that's what cool guys do, right? We listen to astrophysicists, and um, he was talking about any time that you're teaching that you can bring forth some type of analogy, do it. He said because analogies while teaching help frame things in different lights and can help people understand. So that's just your, hey guys, that's just that's just your teaching tidbit for today. Um, but no, the analogy for this is, is the public speaking part. If I would actually prepare for the speaking engagement, right, or or speaking engagement project, uh, I would then stand up in front of that class or whoever it was so much more confident because I had now put in the time necessary to to have some deeper uh, connection to what it is I was trying to relate to everybody else. And if we can take that and then apply it to shooting... We're now looking at being able to kind of do the same thing. But if we're so, but if we're not focused on the preparation piece, things are going to become extremely difficult and we're going to make it harder than it has to be. And now we're more relying on, hey, man, I hope I'm having a really good day here where everything's timing out the correct way because my prep's not where it needs to be. And because I haven't worked on it, we're just going to hope that today, today's one of those good days. And I think more, you know, a lot of times that's, that's what I see from players. We're, we're kind of hoping it's one of those good days. And I, 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 I think it's so interesting. And this is why I think reading is such a, I'm really jumping around, but I think that this is why reading can be so valuable because I read that book outliers a long time ago, a long time ago. And that story about the Beatles stuck with me. And I'm like reflecting on kind of what's starting to be built here in terms of the the subscription and, and and everything else. And I always come back to it. Like I'm always, people, people are amazed to the fact that it's actually me responding to everybody that I have within my subscription. I promise you like the, my, my goal here is that I want everybody to understand what I'm teaching on a level that they can understand it. And the only way that I can do that at this point is by being that involved in the learning process. And I was thinking about that and I'm like, man, it's kind of crazy that I have interactions with hundreds of people every day. And it's even crazier that each person is extremely unique in their own right in regard to what they're looking for, how they learn, where they're at in their journey, uh, what's expected of me, right? Everybody's so different. So in this really strange way, I'm managing hundreds of personalities, um, but all trying to get to the same goal. We're all looking to become better shooters or have a better understanding of shooting or for some, just teach it better, right? Because I work with a lot of coaches and trainers as well. And so I'm sitting there and I'm kind of reflecting on it. And I was like, man, it's it's kind of crazy to think about. And I just, for some reason, the Beatles story popped into my head. And that's where I was like, man, I I subconsciously created my own Hamburg in a way, right? So the Beatles performed 270 nights out of a year. Granted, I'm not performing, but I'm talking and teaching to hundreds of people a day. So I'm kind of put into that crucible of things. And now uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like in a pressure cooker in a way, right? Like, cause I'm, I'm trying to figure out what works best for each person uh, in, 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 in communicating different ways. 
And I don't think there's any other way I would ever been able to get this much volume in, in terms of refining my teaching, seeing results, connecting with people, um, than this. And I'm looking at it kind of like all of this is going to eventually culminate in me being able to put together some type of resource or make the, the big thing I said at the end of the last podcast and, and some people, some people probably heard it and thought I was joking. I said, you know, eventually open up like the McDonald's of shooting, but I believe in that kind of stuff. And I think that eventually, because at the level that I'm able to dive into as, as many case kind of case studies as, as I, as I get to, as I get to dive into per day, I'm learning more and more what works, what doesn't work, what's common, what's not common. How do we fix this particular issue? What connected for you? What word connected for you? Right. And so now it's like I'm, I'm pulling from all of these different people in order to boil everything down to the most simplest of concepts that everybody can understand. And my 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 goal, my vision is that all of that becomes this. This kind of. Plug and play type system that anybody can then pick up and understand whether you're at the highest, highest level or whether you're at the beginner of the, the beginner of all beginners. But I don't think that I'll ever be able to get I don't think I would be able to get close to it had I have I not created this this platform that exposes me to so many unique individuals and people. And it's just it's just it's always interesting to see how many parallels there are in terms of success. And I don't think there I don't think that there's any I don't think there's any accidents, man. I don't think success has any type of act. Like, like you don't see a guy like LeBron James and think, oh man, that guy got lucky. No, you don't you you don't get lucky winning year after year after year being at the very top of what you do. Like I don't think LeBron would ever there's no there's no accident that LeBron came became great. There's no accident that Kobe Bryant became great, right? It's one of those things that it's so easy to say it was an accident, but if you were to peel back layer after layer, you'll see how hard those guys work. Yes, they're going to be blessed in certain types of ways. Maybe that as, as it relates to the body that they're given and the athletic ability. But I always talk about at that highest level, what really separates those guys? And it's it's that work ethic. It's that that attention to the smallest details that keeps them going year after year after year, because you're already talking about the best athletes in the world, all in the same kind of on the same, you know, the same athletic. What's the, I don't know what the word I'm looking for here is, but they, they, they're all very similar athletically. Obviously some are, some are more athletic than others, but what separates those guys is the ability to dial in and really focus on, on, on the nuances within the game that, you know, that a lot of people don't want to focus on. Right. So that's why I, I just believe that, you know, successful people, successful companies, um, successful teams, there's no accidents in terms of how they're successful, especially if done for a longer period of time. Even a team that maybe just does it one year. I'm willing to bet they did a bunch of things leading up that year. Maybe they didn't do them so well the next year, but they did it that year that that equaled out to to being a championship caliber team. Right. I think that that's. um. I think that that'd be, that'd be that'd be really really fair to say. Um, real quick, I wanted to. I thought that's the end. That's the end of my my rant. I I like going on these these Instagram like text text rants, uh, because it kind of gives me ideas on what I can talk about on here, and then I can dive into it a little bit further, and I can expand on my ideas. Could you imagine? Could you imagine an Instagram story as long as this podcast with me just talking through it? It'd be insane. How many little dots would be at the top of that of the Instagram thing? You would you would see see Mike done. You would click over, and then it would be one million of those little. It would look like a straight line going across the top, going across the top. Um, real quick, I did want to talk about. Um, I, I do have a new product that I started, and and uh, it's called the one on one one hour shot consultation, and I'm just starting to put it out there. Although a bunch of people have bought it already, which has been really cool. But you get one hour with me uh, done via Zoom video call, in which we discuss uh, everything that you're doing shooting wise. So you'll send in video of you shooting in multiple scenarios, and then we'll dissect video after video. We'll talk about your goals moving forward, what type of things to what type of things we're going to introduce to get you there. You can ask any questions you want. Uh, the Zoom call is recorded. You'll have it for ever, forever. And then uh, also homework with me assigned afterwards. 
um, in terms uh, in, in regard to talk, diving into what we talked about and what we discussed to help you get to where you want to go. Um, so I've been doing those and have, have received really, really cool response from it. And cool to see people doing that and then jumping right over into the subscription to just keep the ball rolling. Right. Because that's because that's what that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Last thing. And this is the most important thing. Obviously, um, I got a new pair of sneakers. Now, this is why I'm saying this. I have been looking for I don't think they're necessarily considered the Oregon fives, but they're the they're the color of the Oregon fives that the green. Um, I think the Oregon the Oregon fives like the real ones had the duck on the back. These don't have the duck on the back, but I've been looking for these forever man and i found them and i'm super super excited about it i used to love sneakers now i I look at sneakers now as just strictly a liability like it doesn't make sense to buy them but it's one of those things where uh i promised myself i was like if i if i reach a certain amount of money and it it, it, maybe this isn't as important but i did promise myself i want to hit this this goal of mine in terms of financially uh and then that will then give me the right to buy these shoes. Now, the goal financially compared to what the shoes cost makes no sense, right? It makes it makes zero sense. Like people, if you if if you even heard it, you probably like that's that's really dumb. But it was an incentive for me to go get these sneakers that I really really wanted. All that to say, if anybody's sitting on uh, any any uh, any thirteens. Um, any Jordan, any Jordans in a size 13, you can always send those my way. I'd be ha- more than happy to, to take them off your hands. Uh, that's it, man. That's it. I think this was good. I think it was, I actually had more to talk about, but we can, uh, we can save it. We can save it next time. I want to get a, get into a little more about some of the, some of the details within the shot that I've been seeing as of, as of recent. And, uh, especially as it, as it pertains to balance, because I've been getting a lot of questions about how important balance is. And it's extremely, extremely important. And it's one of those things where uh, the more we understand that, the more it really starts to tie into the preparation piece that I talked about now. So we'll get into that a little bit more, especially, especially, uh, especially after today's lesson, me and me and Jeff had a good, had a good workout in which balance was talked about extensively. Um, Man, we should have had you there for that one, B. It was good, but it's all good. It's all good. So that's it, man. Keep shooting podcast episode 21. Uh, Review it, rate it, subscribe to it. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for everything. And I have six days left at my nine to five. So the countdown continues. You know what I mean? I should should do like that TikTok trend where they're like five days, three days. Yeah, next shoot day is going to be like a first official day of freedom, which will be in which will be amazing. Actually, maybe not because I'm supposed to go to Sweden, but may not end up. We'll see. I'm trying everything I can do to get into Sweden, but they keep extending the travel ban. And I don't know. My my biggest fear is getting to Sweden and then and then them saying, nah, bro, can't come in. And that uh, that would that'd be pretty awful. So so we'll see. We'll see. All right, guys. Episode 21 in the books. I appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Until next time. Keep shooting.